gorgeous down here in sunny, well, not so much, Pembrokeshire, on the Oxford University first year earth scientist field trip in Pembrokeshire and a beautiful location called Marlow Sands. We've got some pretty dramatic weather and we're going to look at some exciting Silurian rocks and Devonian rocks and fossils. So I hope you uh, enjoy tagging along <laughs> and I find something new every time and it never gets old and boring. So let's have a look they are a pile of Silurian marine sediments and what you might notice is they're actually sideways. The bedding goes this way. Have a close up look at some of these rocks. So we can see straight away that these rocks are granular because they're full of these grains. Look at all these grains. Some of the grains are very fine, but I can feel them scraping under my finger. Some of the grains are quite coarse. We've got this grey rock and then this yellow brown rock. So these things here look like polar mints of fossils. We've seen these before. These are crinoids fossicles, like we found in my pal's rock that he sent me from Yorkshire. Crinoids only look at the sea, so we can confirm that these are marine sediments. Let's see what else we can find. A bit of bryozoid. And then this thing here, that is the remains of a cephalopod. I'll talk about it. There's a bit of a bivalve shell, a bit of a clam. Some burrows in here as well, so there's lots of things digging through the mud. So these rocks are Silurian, they're about 420 million years old. So, what have we got down here? So, we've got these big branching things, and these are coral. We know that coral only live in tropical environments, so we can say that 420 million years ago, Pembrokeshire was tropical. Okay, exciting. So I was just talking about ripples earlier on. Here's some really nice examples. This one's got current ripples in it, and this one's got the high key and swirly weird ripples in it. Easy! Some nice trace fossils as a Rhizocorallium, Planolites, Salazanoides, Cruziana. Found a nice lump of rock, lots of fossils in it. Got lots of brachiopods, pieces of the coral paleocycloma, some bivalves, some bits of cephalopod, tentaculates. We'll get to see more of this in a bit though. Now we've gone from those grey sandstones into these rocks, which you can see are very different. This is the Skoma volcanic group. These are volcanoclastic sediments. So back in the Silurian, you had the continent of Avalonia with the southern UK, gliding with the continent of Laurentia, which is North America and Scotland and Greenland. And then there was subduction volcanics, very explosive. And these are the distal edges of some of those explosive volcanic pyroclastic floors. And this big yellow thing coming through here, that would have been one of these pyroclastic flows. We can see these sediment rafts here, over there. That's where sediment has been mixed in and then rafted along. Here's a nice sliced section through one of those pyroclastic floors. We can see all these vesicles that the gas was in here. And we can see how it's been squashed. That's really cool. This would have been erupted like the kind of volcanoes you get around the Andes and in North America, in the Rockies. Very violent explosion. 
Oh, this is so cool. Those big three orange things, the three more of those volcanic floors. And then they've got green sediments in between them. Let's see if we can find some nice fossils. Here's some nice phosphatized lingula brachiopods. Some more there and there. So here we've got a beautiful bedding plain and it's full of brachiopods, orthocone nautiloids, bryozoans, tentaculites, bits of trilobite. And this is what the seabed would have looked like 420 million years ago until one of these volcanic deposits came thundering down from the volcano and preserved everything. This is black bits of phosphate and that's what the soft tissue is preserved as. And the rest of it was calcitic shells or aragonitic shells, but they've long since been dissolved away. So it's a slice of the Silurian seafloor from 420 million years ago. But now we have to move on to the next location. So you can see this change in the two rocks there. That's where we've got a fault. So we've got our volcanic group over here. And then we've got our new group we're going to look at over here. And you can see that we've got this change in the dip. So there could be a huge fault through there in that gully. What we're going to have to do is go over and have a look and see what's what. So let's go and do that now. So we can see we've got this abrupt change there between the orange sandstone and then these new units. They change in lithology and dip. That's probably a fault. So now we've moved on from those sandy rocks and we have these calcareous rocks. And then we've got these dark bands and these light bands. And the light bands are full of brachiopod, bivalve shells, bits of cephalopod, corals, there's, there's one. And then these mud layers are carbonate and silicate muds. This represents offshore deeper water. And every so often we get this wash of coral and shell fragments down from shallower water. There's some kind of turbidite flow, maybe some storms. There's a nice paleocycloma. And some more paleocycloma. Fabocytes. Fabocytes. That's clean, isn't it? And here we have an absolutely stunning example of another common lower Paleozoic coral, colonial coral, Halocytes. That's a really beautiful example there. Fantastic. And there's some students getting taught. And there's Izzy making a film. Professor Bertie. Ooh. Now we've moved higher up into the stratigraphy, into younger rocks than the, the coral limestones we were looking at earlier. And we can see the rocks are starting to get a lot redder, a lot coarser grained, bigger, thicker packages of sediment. So this suggests, and I know for a fact because I've been here before and I've looked at the rocks in detail, that the sedimentary environment is getting shallower, we're getting closer to shore. And if you look over there towards the appropriately named red cliff, if the if you can see it, what we actually see is lots of red rocks. So let's go and investigate them. There's some more beautiful wave and current ripple marks. Fantastic. And this sandstone. Mm -hmm. That's some fine sedimentary structures. So now we can see that the sediments really are red. Over there, there's some nice current ripples. Oops, up in that rock. We've got these alternating green and red bands. Red is used from iron oxide in terrestrial environments. So we've gone from shallow sea to deep sea, well, deeper sea, to shallow sea again, and into land. And this is the old red sandstone. So now the collision between Avalonia and Laurentia is mostly finished. And we formed the new continent of Larusia, the old red continent. 
So here's a piece of the old red sandstone. This one's quite fine grained sandstone, with these clay layers and this dark flaky stuff. And the dark flaky stuff is organic matter and it's quite interesting. This is a new bit that's fallen down since last year. It's got these dark carbonized lumps of them that look like fossilized plant stems and roots. So that's quite exciting. So these will be from late Silurian, early Devonian. So this is when plants were just new on land. Oh, cool. So these green sands probably represent standing bodies of water and then the red stuff's when it's dried out. So at the end of our first day in Pembrokeshire, we've seen Silurian rocks to Devonian rocks, going from marine to terrestrial environments, a variety of fossil groups with the earliest land and plant fossils. Weather turned out alright in the end, but we had to pack up early because the tide changed and came in too quickly for us. So now we're going to head back to the bus, head back to the accommodation and get something to eat in the shower. As ever, if you like the video, leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more cool geology stuff, leave a comment if there's any rocks and things you'd like to know about. Until next time, we'll see you later. Bye bye!